All right, folks, today we're going to talk about Chapter 38, which is uh, about Java server pages. Um, and this is a technology that's not too dissimilar from what we're doing with Java server faces, but the approach is a little different. Um, the next course that we're going to have uh, in the upcoming semester is ASP.NET. Some of the techniques that we use for JSP are super similar to how ASP works. And there's, it's really not much of a coincidence that one's called ASP and one's called JSP. Um, and it's kind of by intent. And then you'll see that some of the syntax that's used or the approach for the syntax is very uh, similar uh, with both tools. Um, as we've mentioned uh, in earlier chapters, Java server pages is very heavily used, has been for a long time. But Java server faces is considered the more modern approach moving forward. All right, but it's still important to know about JSP and how it operates, and at the very least, to be able to look at it and understand what it's uh, doing. All right, so these are the objectives for the chapter. Uh, there are a lot of slides for this chapter. I don't plan on like hanging on every single one of them. I'm just going to kind of rifle through them. And then we're going to jump over to the book and just look at a couple of examples really quick. And then I'll leave you to work on the stuff on your own. All right. So when we look at what they're calling here a simple uh, JSP, notice that we have an HTML document. And I wonder how dated this material is, given the fact that all the HTML tags are in uppercase. Yeah, that's pretty old, actually. I, I thought that went out with HTML version 2, honestly, the last time I saw it, where we had to do uppercase uh, tags. Uh, now the preference is lowercase tags. The truth is it doesn't really matter because uh, HTML5 is actually fairly forgiving. But just ignore that, if you will. Uh, notice the, the little highlighted area there with the red box around it and, and the syntax that's being used. So you can see that there's some plain text. And then we have these new tag structures that you haven't seen before, probably. Um, with the percent sign in there. So you have a bracket, and then you have a percent sign, and percent sign bracket to close it. Um, you're going to see that in ASP.NET as well. When you are running ASP code within an HTML page, that's the same tag structure you use. You use that percent sign in there. And there are variants. I will tell you that, like right here, you see an equal sign and some cases that's not what you see, you see other approaches. But that's typical of a, of a script being added to an HTML page in, in various languages. So that's uh, the format. You can see that um, you can run uh, methods natively within those tags right in line with HTML. That's one of the reasons why um, people have used this language for a long time. Because in approach, it's kind of like PHP in a sense, right? Where you just put in like your PHP tags, except those are question marks. You run your PHP code, and then you can intermingle it with your HTML, and the processing happens right there on the page. So that capability is, is kind of cool, to have the ability to throw Java code into HTML and then have it be parsed uh, both <laughs> as a web page and have the ability to execute the code. Now, I don't know if uh, when you were taught PHP, how exactly you were taught. But the general rule of thumb, though, is when you're working with you know, various document types and languages, if you really have a significant amount of PHP that's just doing particular programmatic functions, you may be better off actually making it a separate file and then just including it as opposed to like embedding all that code. And, and part of that is to keep the HTML part of it easy to read. You know, so that technique really is kind of recommended with JSP as well as it is with PHP and ASP. Um, and you'll see when we get to ASP that one of the techniques that you use is that you create a web page of some sort, and then you attach a code file to it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's the recommended method. And it doesn't matter what programming language you use in ASP.NET. Uh, you can use a number of them. The most common ones, of course, are C Sharp and, um, and BB. Here, the back-end language, of course, is Java. So 
the JSP approach, though, does have some of its own little quirky uh, things going on. Let's take a look at how things are uh, moved through when you do uh, JSP. Looks not too dissimilar from the other diagrams that we looked at. Of course, when you just go with these, these three boxes, it's basically standard static requests. I uh, remember with the, with the servlets, how it had a little um, sideline that it went to. And uh, JSP actually has a, an additional component, and that's what actually takes all the JSP scripts and interprets them so that they can run as Java code, and it interacts basically as a separate module um, within the system. Um, all right, so not to make things complicated, but JSP has a lot of different ways it can be inserted and used in applications. Um, they have the, these three basic approaches. So they have an expression, which is the first thing that we saw. And notice the equal sign there. So uh, it says Java expression. You can actually just use straight up Java code right in that spot. They also have what they call a scriptlet. And notice there's a difference there where the equal sign is now um, missing. And that actually uh, ties in to some of the methods that are built in to the JSP um, you know, class structure that you can invoke. So in other words, instead of actually writing Java code, you're pulling from the capabilities of JSP directly. So it has its own little things that it can do. Uh, there's also these uh, declarations. Notice once again the change here which, where there's an exclamation point. And that is, notice, for declaring methods or fields into the servlet. So that's how you create a method basically within an HTML file. Well, that's kind of interesting uh, as well. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know if it was you, Brandon, that ran into this issue, or Michael, I, I forget who it was, or maybe it was Shane, I, I forget who it was, that said I was trying to do a, a comment. You were trying, yeah, you were trying to do a comment, and it, it, it wouldn't render. And that's because if you want to actually do uh, a comment, you really need to use that JSP uh, comment approach so that it parses uh, correctly. You know, now whether it's necessary and to what degree it's necessary, I guess you can argue um, that back and forth. Now, the next slide I'm going to show you, and it's going to be very brief, um, and those of you that have already worked on the homework, you'll understand why, right? So if you're going to look, look really quick. There it is. That's how you do the homework, okay? Um, no, no, no. You can figure it out on your own from there. Uh, it shows you how to do the factorial assignment and how to do it with uh, JSP. And I don't really want to hang on that example because I know you can find it in your book. So at the very least, you're going to go through the struggle of finding it and then typing it in. Right. <laughs> All right, so uh, JSP, uh, being that it's kind of its own little entity within uh, Java as a language, has a bunch of components that we can pull from. And you can see they have a bunch of predefined variables. And the way that you should really look at this is not dissimilar from how you would look at the global associative array for PHP. Do you guys remember that? Were you taught that? You guys know what globals are in PHP? Oh my God, you guys, you're kind of scaring me a little bit. <laughs> All right, PHP has part of its native structure and it, it builds off of the executable that runs on the server. It has what they call a global array that has the capability of interacting with the server environment and pulling back certain information that it stores in, in what they call an associative array. Typical arrays are indexed with numeric values, right? You start at zero and you start counting through. An associative array, which exists in many languages, including Java, the index is, the numeric index is replaced with a variable name. So you have an array whose positions are defined with variables. This is really uh, no different. So there are some that are predefined, but there's also some that pull their information via the interaction with the server they're running on. So some of that information is provided uh, dynamically and some of it is, you know, 
static to a point. Okay, so see, these are some of them. He goes through and he uh, defines each one on the subsequent slides. I'm not going to read it. You can read it on your own, but you can see some of them here and what they do. And I think that even just by looking at um, you know, the words here, you should be able to figure some of them out. The ones that we're going to interact with the most are going to be request and response. You can probably guess what those do. Um, and if you get all the way to the end of the chapter, I think we talk about session information again. And there you go. Hopefully you're, you enjoyed that. All right, so here they have a little bit of an example of a program um, that, okay, well, we're looking at an HTML file, obviously, right? And you can see it's got a form, and it's just a typical HTML form, and you can see the action, though, instead of pointing to, like, PHP or a different HTML page or whatever, um, it points to a JSP file, all right? So you hit the, hit the button, and it goes to this file to figure out what the heck it's going to do. So here's that file. Um, notice that we still have HTML elements present. This is very, very much a correlation should be, think of how PHP works, very similar, right? This is literally a separate file? This is literally a separate file. All right, so, so you got the structure of your HTML document and then interspersed, and in fact the majority of the remaining code uh, really is, uh, you know, Java code. So if you look at um, what's going on here, now notice how the tags are structured. If you remember the three different types of expressions, okay, so this one here allows us to actually go in and write our Java code, and you can see that we have um, variables that we're declaring, a bunch of doubles. Each one of those has uh, a method of producing whatever contents it holds. In this case, they are parsing a double via a request. So um, now the request, what would you think a request does? Think of it as the equivalent of like requesting a page, right? You're just asking for the, the piece of information, basically. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then the request, though, is based upon the page that's asking for the information relative to the code. And hopefully that makes sense. So it's a matter of perspective where the request is coming from. So there's a request coming in, and it's getting the parameter of loan amount. Okay, Loan amount being the name of a variable or a field, right? And if you look back here, um, is there anything called loan amount? Right. So that's what's doing it. So this page, when we hit submit, it's actually requesting the action to happen. So that's what I'm trying to say, that it's a matter of the perspective of where it's coming from. So it's being requested to get that piece of information. So we're sending in whatever's in that field. Very much, once again, like PHP, except it doesn't have, PHP's got much simpler syntax, you know, in terms of doing something like that, where you're pulling from the global array, where the fields are set, where it posts. So whenever you hit a post, it's stored somewhere, in this case in the JSP environment, and then you're pulling back the pieces that you want that are associated to the array with the name of the field that you had in the form. Okay, so I called, you know, uh, that input field loan amount, that gets stored in an array, and then when the JSP load page loads up, it looks for that name, pulls back the value that's associated from the array. So there's like a temporary holding spot in between the pages. So, so what happens to any uh, values that might get declared in this page when the control gets returned to the following one? Does that stay in the array or so all those gaps? Oh, that, that's, a, that's a good question. No, they actually, um, this is going to generate the HTML. So mm -hmm. if the values are lost, uh, hypothetically, they would still be resident in the array. So what I'm getting at is if a second JSP file was called after this one, would it be able to see any new variables that were created here? You know, that's a great question, Michael. I want to say yes. <clears throat> I want to say yes. Oh, you mean relative to this document, if they were declared here? Yeah, if, if they were declared here. Because right now, this is requesting 
loan amount, interest rate, and years from the parent document. Yes. Okay, but that's from the parent document. Um, and maybe it's always relative to the parent, or is it relative to whatever's in, you know, the stack for better for lack of a better uh, Yeah, you know, I, I can't answer that directly without right. experimenting with it. My inclination is to say that the values stick because we're using Java and that will maintain the values of things, but we're also then working with a web environment which may overwrite those. I, I would lean more towards the former than the latter, though. Okay. Um, all right, so it just goes through and it, it grabs a bunch of values, and I think that, that's pretty evident here. So you're getting uh, the information back. Then you actually declare a couple more things. You do some math. You store that. And then you come down here and notice, once again, we're, we're intermingling the ASP and, the, and uh, the HTML. And we have these little directives now that basically pull back the values that we um, pulled in from that array. So now we're taking those values and we're putting them up on the screen, uh, also the ones that are the result of the calculations. So that, that's kind of in a nutshell of how it works. And it really is not dissimilar from the concepts of PHP in that capacity. All right. I am uh, terminating the PowerPoint here. That's more than enough information than you guys need to, uh, to do your homework. Uh, it also, uh, one thing I do want to mention is when you're working with JSP, you can still work with straight up Java files uh, via imports. And that would be um, maybe one of the things that we probably want to uh, continue on and look at because there are these directives and uh, further into the chapter they have little uh, imports where you can pull in beans and load pages. Um, all right, if there's not any questions, I want to kind of terminate this here and get you guys working um, so you can get the stuff done. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can see me uh, after the fact uh, when I hit uh, pause on the recording. Okay, thank you very much.